uh, Crawford. So nice Amir kid. Khan, his 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 kind of thing that he always would repeat <laughs> on camera, his mantra was that I've never been outboxed. I've been knocked yeah. out, but I've never been outboxed <laughs> by an opponent. And he would say like, <laughs> he would. No, I'm not. No, no. I, you I, heard him I say agree. that, right? Yeah. You've heard him say he that. He has been outboxed because he's lost fights on points. And so he, he lost to uh, Lamont Peterson. I mean, he was outboxing Canelo, right? Until he right. Got and out. and that's and his point is, I was outboxing Canelo Alvarez when I got knocked out. I was outboxing. That's why Floyd would never fight me because I never got outboxed. All these different <laughs> things. <laughs> Terence Crawford quite obviously outboxed Amir Khan. Yeah. But yeah, quite <laughs> like like very easily actually. I know. I know he's. <laughs> He has as a bias, but I, I mean, he's kind of right. Even even those sparring sessions with Pacquiao, he was out Who? sometimes getting the better of him. He just he lost like to Lamont boy. Peterson. <laughs> Not on paper. <laughs> Not on paper. No, yeah. he lost to Lamont Peterson. No, not on paper. Amir Khan. Amir Khan. They draw. gave Amir Khan the the draw, right? Or just, was it a draw or a loss? loss? He did not lose. He did not lose. But he, he, I thought he, he lost got that because of the point deduction. Of the points. Uh, the ref, oh, the point oh, but Lamont Peterson had a positive test after that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, Lamont Peterson came back positive. Although positive they didn't man. change it, they didn't change it to a, a no contest or anything. They kept. I think if you look, it's still officially a, a decision. I'll ask you guys a, a question. What do you guys make of this Clarissa Sheila versus Layla Ali drama? Bullshit. <laughs> Bullshit. It's just like this list we were talking about. <laughs> it's all pretend. It's it's imaginary. Throw it out. <laughs> Throw it out. <laughs> Throw it out. No man, I mean. Here's the thing, unbiased opinion, because Sean knows what, how I feel about Clarissa Shields. <laughs> I learned uh, that uh, last show. I learned but something. Unbiased opinion. Okay. And you guys can tell me how you feel about yeah. this, right? There's just no level of competition for her. Hmm. She can claim, yeah, I won two gold medals and I'm undisputed in what now, three different weight classes? You sound like me arguing 60, against uh, 68, 60, Crawford. 64, right? <laughs> this is actually there's, this but is there's different. A, there's a it's big different. difference. It's when you only have. Different seven or eight people in, in that there weight is. class mm -hmm. right well i and think I, so it's it's hard to it's hard to judge is she really that good or is the competition my whole is the competition argument? that Wait, it's back? not the same it's though. not the, the same, argument man. is not the same i can tell you why it's not the same if you <laughs> want me but i feel like if i if i tell you you're gonna get very upset about it no tell me in some way because i can see how it's passionate not. you are it's the, it's the, the no, i like to know the reason know. it's not the same is so clarissa shields has won titles in three weight divisions 154 oh. pounds 160 168 pounds yeah okay go to box rec and look up how many active fighters there are in the world at 168 pounds for women, right? Thirteen. The answer oh, is no. no. Oh. <laughs> the answer is there's about twenty. What? Of those twenty, maybe fifteen or ten of them have winning records, right? And it gets the lower you go, the more it populates. But by the time you get down to fifty-four, there's less than fifty active women in the world, according to Box Rec. Mm -hmm. Only twenty-five of them have winning records, and of those, I'm talking about people who are even one and zero, oh, mm -hmm. right? So at the end of the day. When we talk about the level of competition that somebody has, like a, a Lomachenko, for instance, Lomachenko, there are 2,000 men in that division. 500 of them have winning records. Mm -hmm. Just fractionally, I'm, I'm talking mathematically, right? The level of competition is not the same. It is also not the same as lower women's weight classes. So uh, when, yeah. we were, when we were on the show, okay, <clears throat> one of the things I brought up was why is Amanda Serrano left out of the quote conversation? Yeah. And somebody pinged on the chat and said it's because the level of competition right and this is why i looked all this stuff up so i looked it up and the truth of the matter is amanda serrano competes in a division that has 130 women in it mm -hmm. 50 at, and not to mention she actually has won titles in seven divisions but her yeah. main division featherweight has two and a half times the number of women competing in it there's over three times the number of successful women mm -hmm. in that division right so the truth of the matter is the higher you get at the women's level in weight, in weight, okay. The fewer women are competing in that division to the point where you get to a point where we're talking, you know, just twenty women. There's wow. there's only twenty women who even have winning records in that division, right? Mm. So you look at her last opponent, Clarissa Shields' last opponent. You know where she's ranked on Boxrex list? Eleven. Eleven yeah. out of twenty five women that have a winning record, right? <laughs> so there's only twenty five women that have a winning record. She's ranked eleventh. She picked up two belts from that fight. Right. So so this is when you say like, oh, Terrence Crawford beat nobody and got belts at 140 pounds. It's not really the same thing as if somebody's going to make the argument that Clarissa Shields doesn't have 
the level of competition that she gets to pick up two belts, like not even close to the same thing. Like they're, they're not even in the same stratosphere of thinking. Like she truly is like, I, I don't even buy into the argument that Amanda Serrano has weaker competition. Mm. At this point, I don't buy into it. Amanda Serrano in just one weight division, because she's in the lower weight classes, has to compete with far more women to get a title than Clarissa Shields has to compete with. So, and that, and here's the thing. Now, I want to be fair because I don't want to sound like I'm discrediting Clarissa Shields. She can only fight the best women who are there, right? right. Like all she can do is fight the women who are the best in that division mm-hmm. and beat them, right? And and you could say the same thing about Terrence Crawford. All he could do is fight the people who are ranked the best and win the titles. That's his responsibility. He doesn't have a job to manufacture other opponents that don't exist for him, right? All Clarissa Shields can Others do it. Yeah, others do that. That's true. Mm -hmm. But that's not her job. Her job is to beat the opponents that are put in front of her, who are the highest ranked people that she can fight and make fights with, right? So she's doing her job, and she's doing extremely well. She's accomplished something no other woman has done, and you can't take those things away from her. But I do think it's a little bit premature to look at her as an example and say, oh, she's already the quote. Amanda mm-hmm. Serrano is out of the conversation. Yeah. Amanda Serrano, I just saw a pound for pound list from a website that had Amanda Serrano ranked seventh. Do you believe that? Yeah. Ranked seventh. Do you know Delphine Pursun was ranked fourth on that list? Do you guys remember Delphine yeah. Pursun? She beat, beat Katie Taylor. She okay. Beat Katie a lot Taylor. of people feel like she beat Katie Taylor. Here's the truth. The Delph- one- Women's boxing fight I did see that year. Delphine Pursun has only fought one time out of her native country, and it was when she fought Katie Taylor in the United States. That's the only time she's ever fought out, and out of a division that has less than 200 people competing, Mm -hmm. right? So how many, you think all the best people in the world live in her country? No. No. She's beating, right? She's beating women on 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 the low end of the of the spectrum. So the truth is Delphine Pursun, because she had a competitive fight with Katie Taylor, was now ranked number four pound for pound for women. Over Amanda Serrano, who has seven titles or nine total titles in seven weight divisions, right? So this is why it's completely subjective. Somebody thought for whatever reason, because recently she had a competitive fight with Katie Taylor, therefore she belongs at number four, you know? I'm not on that boat, you know? I'm not there. And I think Clarissa is, you know, right now, I think her resume doesn't equate to what Amanda Serrano has accomplished and her accomplishments don't equate to it. Exactly. I mean, even if you look at, middleweight for females right now there's only three fighters that have double digit wins Mm -hmm. that's it man that have 10 or more wins three fighters Hmm. so i mean there's really that's why i said you got to weigh it out is she that good or is there really nobody there for her to give her that competition stacks is going to go repeat all the stuff i just said tomorrow as if he did all that research himself (laughs) Bullshit. <laughs> I mean, that's one of the reasons Lila Ali went on record and said that she retired because there was not enough competition, right? I mean, obviously, we, we won't know unless they fight, which and it might it might not happen. But, I mean, seeing the eye test, who do you guys see has more skills, Ali or Shields? I don't know. That's hard to say. See, my favorite fighter back then was actually Ann Wolf, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, even still, I love watching old clips of Ann Wolf, and I had always hoped that I would get to see her and Layla Ali fight. Um, and it, that didn't happen. Yeah. You know what I mean? Layla Ali retired. So you could say the level of competition is not there, but I feel like Ann Wolf was on the table or still there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, and, and that didn't happen. So, uh, but I, I would favor Ann Wolf over almost anybody. <laughs> <laughs> what about you stacks? If, if this might not happen, but if they do, if Layla Ali like comes out of retirement, do you consider this a pay-per-view fight? No, 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 no. Why? It ain't worth five or ten million dollars for what? What does it prove? Would it be like that? She that the that, quote. that, that <laughs> the quote. The, yeah, I mean, how, would, they, how yeah. old is she now? Forty-seven? No, forty-two. Forty-one. 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 Forty-two. I don't know. Right? Don't look at me. Forty-one. Forty-two. Here's the thing. Gio doesn't follow women's Clarissa, boxing. Clarissa only has two knockouts. Yeah. Yeah. So all this nonsense that she's going to knock her out. If Ali's standing about 200 pounds, you know, so if, if they drop down to 68 and fight, she ain't knocking Ali out. Yeah. She should fight that's Jimenez why, first. Ali, that's why Ali stays on her goddamn toes and out boxes her if they do. That's why but I was mad. But it ain't worth five or ten million dollars. Mm. I was mad after I watched the fight against uh, Lady Hammer. Uh-huh. I'm like, nobody told me she had two goddamn KOs. Like, I could have just <laughs> not watched this fight and knew that it was going to be a decision. You know what, though? She, she almost got her. She did. I, I, I th- said, I she thought she almost got her. <laughs> yeah. and, and but two knockouts. And no. I feel like that's one of those instances where, like, man, she's lucky that wasn't three minute rounds because she would she would have got her. I think she would have put her out for sure. Yeah. Two knockouts. I don't know. <laughs> they have less time to do it. Far less time to do it. It's like 
at, at she's the heavier, the goat. At the heavier weights, <laughs> no it's, excuses. It's hard. You, know? There's, you don't have to knock people out to be the best. Ask Floyd Mayweather. That's why he's not. <laughs> yeah, too. He was at the time, though. I mean, yeah, I don't think this fight's gonna get made. But if it did, I would tune in just to see like the. the I would uh, watch it. Yeah, to see like the the press conferences because they could talk. To me, if you're inter- entertaining, like I'll, I'll tune in. And I watch. What was uh, Ali like? Twenty six and old, twenty something KOs. Something like that. Yeah, yeah, twenties. But um, yeah, I mean, I think Ali went on on Sway and she was talking to her smack, and then Clarissa Shields went on social media and responded. I got a lot of responses from a lot of prominent boxers, male boxers. You know, so I like that it, women's boxing is being acknowledged. Yeah, yeah. I like that part. I will say one thing because I feel like if you if you just listen to me talking earlier about statistically kind of where the divisions yeah. are at and how they're weighted, it's going to sound like I don't like Clarissa Shields, and that's that's not the case, right? Like I think she's extremely. You just told me I hate Crawford. I just <laughs> <laughs> I didn't tell you. I hate Crawford. Oh no, Stacks it. <laughs> I actually probably did tell you that if you play it back. I was just kidding though. <laughs> Uh, but like, but that's oh, not the case. It? She's she's extremely talented. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, she's extremely talented. It's evident when you look at her last fight. There's an experience gap, mm-hmm. right, between her and her opponent, right? Yeah. And and it's not it's not great. I think for boxing to see that level of experience gap between two individuals, yeah. and that's those are people who are you know competing for world titles and stuff like that. Um, so in some way, this is one of the reasons why women have to jump all over the weight divisions you know, in order yeah. to make the best fights because, you know, the next big name may not be in your weight division or anywhere around you. It may be two weight divisions down. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, you know, we I, make a big deal when guys go up down one division. Like, you know, if you're, if you're Amanda Serrano, if you're Katie Taylor, you're having to, you know, all over the place, you're going to have to jump up and down to find the competition. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, we, everybody knows that the woman, uh, the, the fighters pool for women is, much smaller uh, than men. I didn't know they was that low. Do you think if uh, if more women knew that information, that would kind of uh, motivate them to you know maybe take up the sport, or it would motivate that that number to grow if they knew that? I think That's what motivates them is seeing it more prominently. Mm-hmm. You know the way it is now. Like you see, Clarissa Shields is having opportunities to do things like headline on Showtime, and Katie Taylor is co-maining the zone cards. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so we we get a lot of uh, top rank has been has been pushing Michaela Mayer you know, yeah, it on, yeah. on a lot as, as like, uh, their undercard main event type fighter. So you look at it and I think the exposure that women are getting is what will lead to more women participating mm-hmm. more so than, than anything else. Let me ask you about this fight. Cause there was a fight last weekend, right? Was it last weekend? Yeah. I heard, I yeah. read a lot of stuff. Last... I yeah. didn't watch it, but what was the, the whole uh, big deal about Oh, which so fight? Now, the fight that we saw. <laughs> I don't know their games. <laughs> which, which fight are you talking about? Which fight? The week? fight that we saw in Vegas. I'm assuming mean, there's only one fight. No, uh, last weekend there was two cards. There was a top rank card. And oh, a what, didn't Jay the women's fight? fight, women's, fight. Women's, women's fight. Women's fight. The women's fight. Not women's this weekend. Fight. The weekend that we were in Vegas. Oh, oh Alejandra Jimenez. Yes. 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 Jimenez. Sounds yeah. familiar. The big deal is kind of uh, the backlash that she's received on social media that is predominantly based on her appearance, which is to say that the the look that she chooses to portray is more of a masculine look. She has a short haircut. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, she has a, you know, kind of a chiseled jawline. She is someone who has a masculine voice and always has. Like, mm-hmm. it's a deep voice. Somebody photoshopped a Wikipedia, right, and put that she was born a born a female that turned to a man, or no, born a man that now is portraying herself yeah. as a female, which was a complete photoshop. That's yeah. not true. Mm-hmm. She was born a woman. She was born a woman. She lives... She has a biological daughter. She does have mm-hmm. a biological oh, wow. daughter. Yeah. And she is changing. She's trying to become a man. And I'm sure she is taking testosterone and other things. Mm-hmm. But she completed VADA testing. The levels weren't that high where it was not going to allow her to fight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She lost weight. She went down from heavyweight to... Yeah. But she fought at from super 230 middle? pounds, she went down to 168 mm-hmm. to fight Franchon Cruz. So she lost a ton of weight. Yeah, um, And I think... You know, most of the people who had exposure to her are seeing her for the first time as part of this card with Franchon Cruz, mostly because Franchon <laughs> Cruz has been kind of getting a big push. Like yeah. Golden Boy has had her at the announcer's table. You know, they've had her show up at events. They've had, So they've been really trying to make Franchon Cruz kind of, you know, a big <coughs> deal. Point, yeah. And and so this is one that had a lot of exposure. And it turns out Alejandro Jimenez uh, who came down from 230 pounds? One, I think if you saw Alejandro Jimenez at 230 pounds, 
you probably wouldn't think that, you know, she yeah. looks, you know, uh, I guess a bit more feminine. But for most people, this was the first time ever seeing her. And I think if you yeah. guys want to get more into the, the science of everything behind it, uh, a good person to have on the show would be um, Pat Manuel. Okay. Uh, Patricia Manuel um, was born a female after the Olympic trials in Atlanta, decided to have the whole surgery and start becoming a man. Takes the takes the hormones, takes takes the testosterone, and now actually fights as a man. Had a professionally, professionally yeah. as a okay. man, um, fought on a card in Fantasy Springs under the Golden Boy banner. Yeah, um, as a man and won his first fight. So has actually made the transformation from woman to man, and he can tell you all about the VADA testing, about what they're looking for, about the levels of testosterone, about the hormones that they can take, what's legally allowable for them to take. But now, like I said, even fighting as a man, mm -hmm. there's only certain levels of, of everything that he can he can take, yeah. you know. So, oh, wow. and that fight was actually entertaining for a lot of different reasons. One is because Alejandro Jimenez is coming down from heavyweight, yeah. and it was like watching. And and I know I'm not I don't mean this in a bad way, Gio. So it's okay. Weapon. It was like watching Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. <laughs> fight. You know, some of the people who eat, like she's just walking through punches. Yeah. She's not, it's, there's not real defense. She's just eating punches and, and pursuing. And that tired down Franchon Cruz. So that was entertaining. She knocked Franchon Cruz's wig off. So that was a little bit entertaining. What? <laughs> she knocked her oh, wig off. Dude. And then, and then her, you see that, right? That was entertaining. I like, I, she knocked her wig off yeah. uh, toward the end of the round. They tried to put it on and her. And they tried to put it back on. The and the, the, trainer, the, off the, off the trainer was not Get having it. Off her. Snatched <laughs> it off her head. Snatched her wig off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I'm, like, trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to picture this. <laughs> you got to find Yeah, the trainer yeah. snatched it off her head, threw it away. Yeah. Uh, it was, uh, yeah. So it was entertaining oh. for a lot of reasons. Close fight, <laughs> Close and fight. and and Franchon Cruz lost is the is the end of it. So Alejandro Jimenez is wow. now the the super middleweight world champion, and feels as though even though she's come down from 230 pounds, that she could make it down to 160 if Clarissa Shields Damn. wanted to mix it up wow. down there. Hmm. So wow. when you fight. when you mentioned. Uh, Leila Ali, the first thing that came to mind was you should probably try your hand with Alejandro Jimenez yeah, at first. 160 pounds first. Yeah. See how that goes. Are you finding the video? Stax yeah. is going to look up the... the... <laughs> it's, like she, it's like it's her mouthpiece. <laughs> She's like, put it back in. <laughs> it's like, get that shit off her head. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. I thought it was entertaining, actually. It was an entertaining it was a good fight. fight. It was a good fight. Was a good fight. Yeah. So it was yeah. a Munguia fight? Oh, yeah. Mungia Sullivan fight. That was a good oh, yeah, fight. that was pretty good. That was, that was pretty good. <laughs> Those guys are throwing chingasles, man, going back and forth. Yeah. Mungia was hurt yeah, a few it's, times. It's frustrating to shots. watch Mungia. It's mm. frustrating. I can understand that. He takes that. big punches, <clears throat> and for no reason, it seems like, because his corner tells him, move your head, move your waist. Stereotypical Mexican all the way right there, man. That's your Bandido Vargas, yeah, man. Yeah. That's your come forward style, just get hit. <coughs> You know, I mean, shot, you yeah. know, Julio Cesar Chavez said that uh, he didn't he didn't say names, obviously, because Eric Morales is in his corner, right? Yeah. Munguia. But he said que, que no sabe nada esos pendejos or something like <laughs> he said they didn't know shit in his corner. Idiots. And uh, Morales responded to that and shit. I forgot what he said, but uh, he did respond. But I don't know. It's frustrating to watch him. Munguia. You know what, though? I mean, if you if he looks back at himself, man, he, he fought shot. that same style. Yeah. He beat he, Olivia off that style. He kind of yeah, like even with his lip cut. Who man, uh, Chavez? Chavez Senior. Chavez, yeah. Chavez Senior. I mean, <coughs> the second De La Hoya fight. If you look, he quit in the corner like his son quit. So I mean, he got cut on. He got his, <laughs> lip, got his <laughs> lip cut and quit in the oh, corner. Like father, like son. Y'all better edit that Woo! out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being real. You better edit that out. You can be pissed at me all you want. You guys listening in? Go you YouTube. You just lost all shit. your viewers, <laughs> yeah, man. No, yeah. And hey, that's making Instagram clips <laughs> right there. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, they like son. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he doubled down, tripled down. <laughs> oh man. That's double crazy. down like Gio talking about Terrence Crawford over here. All day. <laughs> Taking that bet. <laughs> no, but you know, Chavez was another guy who kind of made it out of the whole drug thing, depression. Mm -hmm. He talks about it a lot, like openly now on ESPN Deportes. Yeah. That he was just like lost. I saw an interview recently <laughs> where he's saying he was just lost. Like, I think one time they, they took him to rehab, like unknowing, uh, unknowingly, and he wanted to like hit his wife and his kids because they took him there without his consent. His consent. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people give Chavez uh, Jr. a lot of, you know, criticism, but he went through a lot of shit as a kid. 
you know, they call him spoiled. They call him like he doesn't have discipline. But I mean, you know, he had a he had a, it's a lot to live up to take man. in. Yeah, it's uh, your dad ca- casts a huge shadow. Yeah, to begin with, you choose this sport as a profession. You got some natural ability, so you're doing good. But it's still a big shadow that you have to, you know, some big shoes to fill. So yeah. it's a lot of pressure. A lot of. Do you guys ever watch the uh, the Maravilla documentary when it came out? Uh, I read the book. That was a good doc. That's a good documentary. What's it called? Yeah. Do you know? Maravilla. I think it's just called Maravilla. Maravilla? Yeah. I'll look it oh, up. yeah, yeah. This is, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah. Where they strip basically from the where, they, where they oh, strip yeah. her from the title. And, the and basically, it, it, the conspiracy theory is that they tried to get it on Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Jr. Yeah. yeah. So basically, what, what started it all was he had a, a mandatory to fight. Mm-hmm. He was contracted under HBO. HBO says, no, you're no, not going to fight this guy. You need to fight somebody else. A big so name fighter, yeah. When he took the big name, he got stripped of his title. So. That's what and they gave then him Chavez the Jr. belt, right? Chavez Jr. got the belt for fighting that same fighter. <laughs> yeah, fighting Zbik. Zbik, yeah. 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 the German fighter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. I think they said something that uh, Maravilla and Zbik, it wasn't like they were names or at that time. Yeah. He gets stripped. They gave him the diamond belt, right? He give fights, him something. He I don't fights know. somebody. For yeah. the diamond belt, and so he's—I think he crashed the WBC convention, right? He's all I, like, I don't remember, but it was a good out, documentary. Uh, I recommend it. I haven't seen it since it came out years ago, but that's what uh, the Bala, father was still alive, yeah, right? The Bella crashed it. Him and Tom Loeffler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And oh, they, Tom Loeffler. <clears throat> yeah, and they were, because they were both with the uh, Maravilla at the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like Sergio. So I, me- I remember they said in Spanish, like, do the right thing. You know, you yeah. guys know what the right thing. And he was very respectful, I think, to Suleiman. He's all like, you know, I respect the, the organization, like, but do the right thing. Like, I want I want Junior. I want Junior. I think it was a year after that that they yeah, finally fought. But, yeah, that's when you saw the politics at work. I mean, yeah. We talked about guys making comebacks earlier. What do you guys think about Sergio Martinez making a comeback? If it happens. I, to me, again, it depends on who are we talking about. Who's he coming back against? You know, he if he wants to do some local fight and feels like he's in shape to do it, uh, I can't think of someone who probably has better conditioning. I know that he had problems with his knees and stuff. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of his decline had to do with, with the leg problems more so than his ability to, to be conditioned and, and things like that. Um, he was always a world-class athlete, you know, like a cyclist and stuff yeah. like that. So I think... You know, it depends on who we're talking about. I don't think he should come back and fight Triple G. Should be a you battle, know? <laughs> like battle of Argentina, him and my Donna. <laughs> 175. Oh, yeah. But Let if he wants to come back it. and take some fights, like, yeah, and, he's, first, and he's in shape. I didn't really believe it, but we talked to his trainer, and they're saying the knees are good, and they're saying that they're serious. So It's crazy what time off can do, man. It can mm. heal it. He's, what, yeah. 41? 41. 42? Yeah. Something like that. 41, 42. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Like, yeah, we were keeping a, a close eye on the on the on the knees and stuff. But I mean, only they know. Like yeah. that fight when he was fought Cotto, only they really knew. You know, we didn't know until we yeah until he, the fight when we saw the long shorts. So yeah, that fight doesn't count. <laughs> yeah, I don't count. <laughs> no, you know what? His trainer was that telling us that he though. was already like beat up by the time he fought Martin Murray, I mean, mm-hmm. which he got dropped in that fight in Argentina. Yeah, he was saying his knees were going. His I think he had like a broken rib, but he still wanted to fight because it was in Argentina. In obviously, rain. yeah, mm-hmm. he had to fight because it was Argentina. Yeah, okay. and but, that's the reason why he's coming back. He, I mean, if he does come back, he's gonna postpone the uh, the Hall of Fame because he had to be retired for five years, correct? To, yeah, you know. So uh, this is this is the fifth year. So if he does come back, he's gonna postpone that. And he says he wants to fight for, for, his, tough, Argentina, for his Argentina fans. Don't postpone it. You know what I mean? Like, that's crazy. You're going to pass on the Boxing Hall of Fame for the next six years so that you could box one more time in Argentina? Man. He'll make it back there. I know. He, he <laughs> definitely will. Time will it's fly. just a long time. You know what I mean? It's a yeah. long time. Like, I like the point that you brought. Like, um, It's like, who's, who's he coming yeah, back Yeah, who's he fight? coming back against? Yeah, you know? so... More power to him, but it's just like anybody. We don't want to see him hurt, right? Mm-hmm. Like I don't want to see him come back and get get blasted out in one round, and you know that kind of thing. But if he can come back and be successful, and he feels in condition to to, to do it, and they pick the right opponent, then it's kind of like you remember when Ricky Hatton came back, yeah, right? Like Ricky Hatton came back mm-hmm. and he was boxing. He looked like he was winning, and then suddenly there was Boom. like that eighth round knockout or whatever it was yeah. that. And it's kind of at the end of the day, you look at it and you're like, ah, that's okay. just. Yeah, yeah. I wish I didn't have to see that yeah. you know what i mean if, if, i don't want to see it yeah if you guys were yeah. but it's also going back to the thing where some of them need that competition to to feel like sure cool, you yes. know? or they may need the means like some people i'm not saying that that's the case with sergio martinez some people may fight because that's they need the money yeah. you know what i mean like, chavez right he's next. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. I'll ask you guys, if you guys are giving the homework to put two fights together for Maravilla Martinez, you guys are his management team. Who do you guys pick? Nobody you've ever heard of. Okay. Jose Martinez <laughs> and um, <laughs> just random names. Yeah. You Jesse some, Rodriguez. The first fight would be nobody you've ever heard of. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's what, at what weight? <laughs> Yeah, well, so yeah, you, guys are, you guys are his probably. management team, so you guys pick the weight. Well, I, I imagine that he's been out long enough that 60 is probably a challenge. Um, and According so to them, it's not, surprisingly. 60? Yeah. Still? Surprisingly. I mean, he's always been a great athlete, yeah. and I don't imagine that he just went and got out of shape, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I guess, I guess it's not that surprising. Um, and I guess when you think about it, he was never really seemed like he was a true 60. Yeah, he was kind of small. You know, like yeah, he, like, like he actually 54. probably would have been better at 54. Mm-hmm. Um, so if he could still make 60, still probably someone you haven't heard of. <laughs> <laughs> at 60, I'd probably put him in with somebody like Gabriel Rosado. Hey, Ooh, that's a good fight. Gabriel Rosado. I, like that. I was thinking about that fight. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's, I it's not. I would, that, he's not <laughs> I'm with you. Stax man. I'm with you. He's not, he's uh-uh. not, the top, he's not yeah. a top level. He's still a quality name. Not yeah. first fight, though. First fight? Uh-uh. Yeah, no, no, man. Gabriel Rosado's not, again, this is, this. that's not nobody. You no, know I, I mean? know that. He's and somebody. I'm not saying he needs to fight nobody, but Gabriel Rosado is... Would you, yeah. would you put him in there with somebody like what Jason Quigley? No, Rod Salka. Sixty. <laughs> <laughs> put him in. Uh, why doesn't he just Floyd Mayweather it? Let's put him in against some kickboxer or some. <laughs> Bro, Let's put him try in to protect McGregor. the knees, though, you know. Put him in against McGregor. Manny Pacquiao. No. At sixty. No. no, do it. Involved. That Pacquiao involved, can so. get another title. I mean, but he doesn't. How would he get a title? Sergio doesn't oh, have one. That's it. true. <laughs> but, but he can. That's say, not how titles work. He Gio. can say he fought at sixty. <laughs> it doesn't I, count. I know, man. <laughs> so nobody that you know, second fight, you would give Gabriel. Yeah, Gabriel yeah probably Gabriel Rosado. That's a good. Fight. I would. Yeah, two names. You know. The problem is, what if he wins those two fights? Yeah. Right. <laughs> Because then you start having to talk about like, okay, now we got a higher dose. <laughs> we got to start putting them into uh, to sixty against some some top people, you know. Mm-hmm. So yeah, he ain't fighting Boo Boo. He ain't fighting Charlo. He ain't fighting G. He, he's just going against Boo Boo. Why not? Wait, let's talk about <laughs> the fight last weekend too. Uh, J Rock Williams against uh, Banana. You got J Rock. Banana. Get J. <laughs> what do you guys think oh, about that? Kind of. I'm kind of glad he lost. Honestly, a lot of people are hopping on and off that bandwagon. When he was undefeated, like yeah. Speaking when he lost of, to Charlo, that was off of it. that's a when he won again, hopped on it again. That's Samson's guy too, right? <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Speaking of Maravilla, dude yeah. has a knack for finding talent, S- yeah. Samson. people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when I saw him like walking him out, I was like, oh, okay, there he is again mm-hmm. finding danger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he was never little, acted like the underdog though. I was gonna say like, that I was a little upset when I saw the odds because I'm like, when I yeah, you, you can kind of pick him. I'm like. He's too high ranked. Like when I the, seen those odds, I was, I was telling like, Cynthia, man, I was, I was, man, I should have dropped some money. Yeah, when I was, I was Vegas, upset, man. Yeah. It was like minus twenty five hundred. Yes, I was upset. I was <laughs> like, I was man, like, Geez, that's disrespectful. Those are those kind of odds where like people that know boxing, like you know, like that's too high. Like let's let's put Way twenty bucks or something. You know, I, yeah. But yeah, good fight. Though. I was texting him. I'm like, oh, this is a good fight, and then I'm like. I said, I think Julian is going to get beat, and then boom. Well, was, you know, he did He did tell me that I think after the second or third round, you were saying, I think he might lose this one. And the thing that I thought was weird was I thought he was losing the second round, mm-hmm. but the announcers were talking about how well he, looked, he was yeah. doing. He right? looked good the first round. And, and Yeah, the first round for sure, but I think it was the <laughs> second round where I was watching, and the announcers were just talking about how well J-Rock <laughs> was doing. And I'm sitting there thinking, man, I thought he got blasted with a couple pretty good shots in this Dude, round, yeah. some heavy artillery this that round. That whole card, Goosen was just like all on the PBC's yeah. fighters' tails. It's it nothing new. With the, the young kid, Cornflake <laughs> Lamana, right? Trash. Cornflake was getting beat up, man. Oh, that's he's going to adjust. He's just taking some shots. He's missing with all those punches. And then you just see his head going back, boom, boom. When mm-hmm. they're showing the replay, his lips cut, his face is cut. Yeah. They finally throw in the towel. Like, that kid got beat up. Like, yeah. what fight were you watching? Mm-hmm. That's what I thought with, with J-Rock, too. And there were some of the rounds where they were kind of praising the work that he was doing. I was like, I feel like he's taking uh, some assault here. <laughs> Every <laughs> round. It, it seemed like it was getting tougher and tougher. Yeah. yeah. Every round. Like, you're like, he's a champion. He's, he, you know, he's going to adjust natural. Yeah. He's going to come back. And every round is getting tougher. It's just like. But you guys it know, it's hard happening. It's hard to call fights. Yeah. You know? That kid used his he reach. Could, he boxed. Yeah. When he 
needed to come inside. He was able to come inside. He kept popping him with that uppercut. I mean, yeah. he's putting punches yeah. together. J Rock just didn't have an answer for him. Yeah. I thought you would sympathize more so as as commentators. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> as commentators i thought you'd sympathize more and be like i understand it's hard it's Hell difficult no. sometimes <laughs> uh, i just yeah like back to back, <laughs> back to you guys point, like he was get getting broken <laughs> down now I, I kept hearing the word champion i mean yeah you win that title you're a champion but i'm like i still i still hear title holder you're a title holder title holder you're a title holder you know it's like it can be taken away if you unify you're like okay you're a champion now you're 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 I've, building that. I've said that a lot yeah. in the past. There's a difference between a title holder and a, and champ. a champion. Yeah. That's Damn. what I just said about Postal. He <laughs> zero title Man. defenses. Zero. This guy. Zero <laughs> title defenses. I don't know. To some, there are some times where I understand that, but there are other times, like, specifically, I think I actually came on, on here after the Canelo-Danny Jacobs fight, and we were talking about that fight, and mm-hmm. one of the things I mentioned was how dismissive I felt Brian Kenny was. <laughs> yeah. You remember? And, and I think, and again... Not to discredit Brian Kenny or anything he's doing. The guy works a lot. He mm-hmm. shows up on PVC cards, shows up on his own cards. He calls all the fights, you know. Yeah. But at the same time, I think when you, you he's sitting there essentially saying, "But Danny Jacobs isn't a real champion, though." Over and over, he said right? That? Yeah, effectively. Oh, I, he was saying I'm, good punches by the champion. Yeah, like I'm, I'm paraphrasing. And mm, and basically. Sergio Mora actually told him yeah. during the fight he's, he's a happens. champion too. Yeah. And and his reaction was well. He has a title, but we all know who the real champion is kind of thing. And I think at the end of the day, like, Danny Jacobs had to work long and hard for that title. You know, he went through a lot in his life. He didn't win a vacant title. Like, I I agree. (laughs) I agree. In a very close fight. He he is the champion, though. You know what I mean? Like, you can't can't take it away from him. He holds the belt. He's the champion. Like, don't... Don't disrespect him that way. So yeah. I get the title holder aspect of it, but at the same time, like I don't think we should be blatantly disrespectful to yeah. to any champion. Like Canelo hadn't beat him yet. Yeah, you can't yeah. just give Canelo <laughs> credit for beating yeah. him already, right? Like he holds a title belt. You have to you have to beat the guy. You can't give him credit for yeah. it. You know, I mean, there's an argument that he won the bacon, but when he fought Triple G, Triple G was the champion. A lot of people thought that he won the fight. So like, if you no, shut up. <laughs> All right, but anyway, you know, I feel some type of way when they call people former champions. Because they're still champions. Like, <laughs> they're still champions. It, it, oh, you're not going to you say Jordan was a former That has yeah. to sting, like, too, right? I, I, I would like to ask someone that, but I imagine yeah, I heard yeah. Chris Algieri, actually, uh, during the broadcast, because he calls the fights now with Christina Poncher, uh, right? Christina Poncher, who does it. And she introduced him one time as former world champion, yeah. Yeah. Chris Algieri. Like, oh. And he even mentioned, like, that former part kind of stings still. Yeah. yeah. Like, it doesn't, you know. When we had, when <laughs> yeah, we had Bandido, yeah. uh, when we had Bandido, like, I, I feel weird saying ex-campeon mundial, which Especially, is in Spanish, former. like, they call yeah. certain guys, like, let's say Mikey Garcia, who move up and wait. They're, like, the former champion. You know, it's like he lost it when he didn't. Even yeah. when I write, like, I'll put three-division world champion, yeah. four-division world champion, two-time world champion yeah. Jesse Vargas. Yeah. You know, like. You get, yeah, sounds so better. So just, I never put former. It's actually really easy. Yeah. I think it's a lot easier with three division, two division. Where it's hard is when someone has had a title one time and, and then lost it. it. Because yeah. if you're writing an article and you're talking about Andy Ruiz Jr., for instance, yeah. Yeah. you can't say world heavyweight champion Andy Ruiz Jr. Because everybody's going to read that and go, he's not the world heavyweight yeah. champion, yeah. right? Yeah. Or so like it's a lot, it's a lot harder for yeah. for someone yeah, who's only had yeah, that when one it's title. Yeah, like one time like that. Yeah, yeah exactly. So somebody like Reese, I would put, you know, one Andy, time, Andy one, Reese, who recently lost his title to, you know, will be. Yeah, you're not going to call him the former Mexican <laughs> first, he- the former first yeah. Mexican heavyweight yeah. champion. Yeah. yeah, that was actually another thing because Alejandro Jimenez was a heavyweight champion and is a Mexican native. Mm. And the woman she won it from, Martha Salazar, wow. is also a Mexican wow. native. So after that, people people realized wow. that those two had been heavyweight champion before and were like, oh, these are the wow. first Mexican yeah. heavyweight champions, yeah. Martha Salazar and, and uh, so that's, uh, Alejandro Jimenez. I got into it with somebody on, <laughs> online about that in one of these boxing groups. Uh-huh. And they were saying, well, he's not a real Mexican. Uh, Andy Reese, right? They're talking oh, about yeah. Andy Reese. Andy Reese isn't a real Mexican. He's an American and... You know, he's an American champion, not a Mexican champion. <laughs> he was and, born here. Right? Yeah. Okay. And, Technically, right? he is and American. So uh, the kid I was arguing with was a, was a Puerto Rican kid, right? Mm. And I'm like, so where do you rank Cotto? <laughs> right? Ooh. And then I said, because, I said, because you know he's the best champion to ever come out of Providence, Rhode Island. Bang! Right? right? I said, so <laughs> you want to technically speak. There you go. He's an American. Yeah. He's an there American. He ain't yeah. Puerto Rican. <laughs> 
Dude, yeah. he, like, yeah, he, fought, didn't like he fought on the Olympic alternate team for Mexico, didn't he? Like, he's, uh, what else do you need to do? Yeah. If you could be a, an Olympian for Mexico, counts. <laughs> you know what I mean? Let like, me tell you, though, I don't think many Americans are claiming him before that title. <laughs> nah, man. Yeah. They were nobody, looking was at him, claim, nobody was claiming Andy, bro. Mm -hmm. Andy Reid's that American heavyweight over there. Contender. No. I don't know. Yeah. So, actually, he was, like, the third Mexican heavyweight champion. <laughs> I remember people were trying to say... Martha Salazar and... Uh, they were trying Tigre. to say uh, Reese was a, a heavyweight champion, too. I'm like, that dude was from Puerto Rico. Yeah, he, yeah he's Puerto Rican. He's yeah. your cousin or something. Right? John Reese. <laughs> yeah. But uh, Roy Jones's title doesn't count because he won it against John Ruiz, though. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great heavyweight champion, Roy Jones Jr. <laughs> <laughs> Man. What do you guys think about the fights this weekend, man? How do you think, uh, Daniel, do you think he'll knock out Red Cats within six, oh, seven? Man. Think it'll go the distance? What? I think he I think he does knock him out um, late, though. I think late. I think Danny has that just – he has that power, that punch that can – and Red, Red Catch is there to be hit, you know, so, yeah. I agree. I think late stoppage. I hope it's a tough fight for him. I'm not a big fan, but I, th I think he's going to win. You so, don't like Danny Garcia or <coughs> – I don't dislike anybody, Sean. I'm just not <laughs> sure. a big fan of his. Okay. Well, actually. Like you don't have his poster on your wall, you mean? Or? <laughs> <laughs> sure. No, I just, I wasn't a big fan of all these guys who were, when they were undefeated and they were acting like they were the greatest thing, calling out Mayweather back then, like Thurman and Danny. I don't think Sean Danny Porter. called out Mayweather, right? I'm sure he did. Thurman did. Thurman, Thurman, Thurman did, did before he was, like, yeah. Well, yeah. if it wasn't Danny, it was Danny his father. Yeah. <laughs> well, I do agree. When they had their own, they were acting like the... Like yeah, the, but you know, guys like Thurman and Porter, I, I feel like they've proven that they are that champion. I don't think Danny has, to me. Yeah. I mean, Do you guys remember... Uh, I know Terrence Crawford fought Red, uh, Ivan, right? Do you guys remember the... No? They never fought? I think they did. Nah, he wouldn't no, fight somebody that fought good. Ivan <laughs> Lower weight division. No? I don't Terrence know. Terrence Crawford and Ivan Reddick. You're the fact checker. No. I think so. No, yeah, fact checker. You're the fact checker. You wouldn't fight somebody so highly ranked, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say that. I take, I take it Terrence isn't next to the Canelo poster either. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's just the Canelo poster, and that's it on your wall. <laughs> yeah. <it>? <laughs> They're all good, man. <laughs> no. No. Never fought him. His four, he's got four losses. Okay, who has he lost to? Zlachichin, Tevin Farmer. Farmer, I'm thinking of Farmer. Yeah, John yeah. Molina. And I think you were thinking of Zlachichin, but yeah. no, I'm just <laughs> him and him and John Molina had that drag out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tevin Farmer versus him. How? What was the uh, the outcome on that one? Tevin beat him. Um, <laughs> UD. <laughs> <laughs> we established 90. that. We got that one. <laughs> He lost. 98-90 on two cards, 99-89 on another okay. card. Okay, that's a wash. And Farmer got deducted a point and still. And still washed him? Still washed him. Yeah. yeah. What do you guys make of the Ryan Garcia, Tank Davis comments? Do you think it's all publicity? Do you think it's not going to happen for two, three years? What do you guys think? H Oscar ain't going to let no, huh? Tank anywhere near Ryan Garcia. Man. Yeah. No. I don't see it happening. Yeah. Ryan's looking good, though. I will say. Mm -hmm. I think uh, – you know, you bit your lip when you said that. No, I mean, <laughs> he's a he's also a good boxer. So, mm -hmm. no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> no, I, I yeah. I, <laughs> he fights okay too. Yeah. No, he's he's looking better. He's looking better. He's, I actually I'm see, glad you brought him, him up because I can't say shit about Ryan Garcia on his show without him getting mad afterwards. Uh, you know all the comments I get? And how many people are <laughs> inboxing me because Dude. you're talking about Ryan? That's a, that's a true statement. I will say one of the most sensitive subjects for the show, like the uh, thing that brings the most negative comments, is saying anything critical about Ryan Garcia. That's like, good. I don't think... That's some good publicity right I, there. I don't think that <laughs> I am... Uh, I don't think I mean, you mm -hmm. know, uh, I don't feel as though I'm mean-spirited to any fighter. Yeah. I have a tremendous amount of respect for the fighters and what they do. Mm -hmm. But I do give my honest opinion. And sometimes if I think someone could have performed better or whatever the case is, yeah. I'll say it. And uh, there's been a few times on the show where I mentioned that about Ryan Garcia and got some venomous ah, feedback and comments. Up, Dude, those are <laughs> Especially right after 
his <laughs> his fight that fell out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Okay, yeah. Oh, man. And I just, I had a lot to say about that yeah. whole situation because I had, I was getting calls the what next morning. What did you morning. have to say? Mm-hmm. I want no, that was, negative feedback. Well, that Saturday, right? that Saturday <laughs> morning, show. I had got Stags a call was, from. Uh, misrepresenting from, information. Uh, <laughs> 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 so I get a Switching call from, the facts. I get a call from it Philly, was, right? From that. Banner. Okay. And the owner of Banner calls me up and says, okay, he's got a fight. He is fighting after all. He's going to be fighting um, Peter Petrov. All Petrov has to do is come in and weigh 142 pounds, right? He weighs 142 pounds at 11 a.m. The fight's going to take place. Him and Petrov are going to fight. He's going to replace uh, right. Sparrow? He's gonna, yeah, Avery okay. Sparrow, right? So I put it out. Mm-hmm. That's not the truth. That's not, that's not what's he going on. He didn't fact check it, you know? That's so why we shouldn't have, make him the fact checker. I have checker. Ryan's mom calling me up. Oh. How come okay. you didn't? How come you didn't get my opinion? This and that, blah blah blah. I'm like, I think I heard about this. Tell me okay. your opinion. Mm-hmm. Let me know what you want me to write, and I'll put it out right now. Yeah, yeah. Or put Ryan on the phone. When you guys tell me what's going on, well, you're just gonna have to wait because we're gonna have a press conference at one o'clock. I said, okay, well, and Carson, right yeah, right. Let, well, let me go to your press conference and I'll put it out. No, yeah. the only person that's going is Ali. Okay, cool, whatever. <laughs> then, then you put whatever you want, say whatever you want to say. I'm just telling you, I'm just relaying a message from Banner. Mm-hmm. It was that whole thing to me was a mess. Mm. What it, basically what I said is, if everybody knew what this kid was going to be when he got signed, to me all that should have been in that contract to begin with. Mm. For every for so many tickets, you get a percentage. Mm-hmm. For so many tickets that you sell, you get a percentage. This is what you're going to fight for. This and that. Once that contract's in place, that's it. That's it. Yeah. I don't care how many millions of followers you have or how much money you're making or whatnot. To me, all that should have been negotiated beforehand. Mm-hmm. Or maybe say after two years and you sell so many seats, we can go back and renegotiate your mm-hmm. contract, because the only people that were getting hurt at that time were the fans for not, you know, not yeah, watching fight. a fight. Yeah. Because first it was Sparrow, and then that shit happened with Sparrow where he got locked up. The U.S. Marshals came and got <laughs> his ass. Yeah. But that's not Ryan's right? fault, though. Uh, of that's course, not that's not right. Ryan's that's fault. Not Ryan's but fault. they had people in place. Mm-hmm. Romero Duno. Yeah. Right. Then mm-hmm. he didn't want to fight Duno because of one reason or another. I'm not mm-hmm. saying he didn't want to. F- him personally didn't want to fight him. But because of factors, yeah, bigger factors, yeah. the fight didn't take place. Then the fight didn't take place with Peter Petrov. So it was it was just a mess, and it was a bad look on Ryan at the time, mm-hmm. because fans want to see him fight. Mm-hmm. But it worked though; he got to it, renegotiate it, his contract. <laughs> yep. Right, he's getting he, paid more now than he was then. So at the end of the day, fans got to see the fight a few months later. Yeah, and he's getting paid more. This is the first so instance that I see, like, a fighter kind of, like, go on social media and really kind of, like... Air it out. Yeah, towards a promoter, where before, and you yeah. couldn't do that. That was, yeah. like... Yeah, that's... Ryan so got what he wanted. Way. You know who paid for all this stuff? Andrew Cancio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's the one who paid for it. Well, he'll <laughs> be fighting on a, a top rank. He's going to make his top rank debut, and he's going to be fighting on the Casimiro Anui card mm-hmm. in Vegas. Uh, but yeah, remember nice. he bad mouthed him, and they kind of said we're tired of people talking bad about us in public, and so they dropped him. And I think that's going to happen <laughs> to <laughs> JoJo if, Mark, you know, and this is just my opinion. Kevin Farmer, if he doesn't beat Farmer, I don't expect JoJo to be with Golden Boy any much, you know, very much longer. Mm. There's just certain things you can say and certain things you can't say. Yeah, with about Golden you, Boy. and that's that's with anything, you know. If mm-hmm. I go and I bad mouth the governor's office, mm-hmm. I won't have a state job tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's just the truth, you know. Yeah. what I mean. And that's that's in any that's in anything you know what mm-hmm. I mean. Yeah. So so Ryan I mean Garcia, unless what Valentine's Day right? Valentine's, Valentine's Day, February fourteenth. You guys are gonna be on Honda the job Center. right? Yeah. yeah, we're gonna have to watch it on the side. Right yeah, there. you guys will be All Star. Yeah. yeah, they're at All Star yeah. doing the commentary. Yeah. I'll just be getting back from Vegas, so I don't know. Maybe I'll just go hang with you guys. I don't there know. You yeah. go. Just Do don't it. stand outside their commentary table until they let you in. Yeah, he's <laughs> bringing his girl. You're making them really girl. uncomfortable last time. <laughs> Did I, man? I no. made you feel uncomfortable? <laughs> <laughs> he's a little intimidated. You act like I was rubbing on your shoulders or something. <laughs> you kind of were. <laughs> it came up to me like, hey, what's up? I'm stacks from ringside. I'm just going <laughs> to curl up right next to you. <laughs> I've seen you on TV. You don't got to rub me that way. <laughs> I've seen, <laughs> seen you on TV. I've seen you on Just Boxing. I know who you are. <laughs> so how's the show going, man? Just Boxing. Yeah. How'd you guys link up to, to begin yeah. with? Because you had a, another co-host, right? At the I beginning. Did. Yeah, so. Did he just like knock on the door and just stand just there and take like, him in? You know how he ended <laughs> like, up. I'm better. <laughs> you know how he ended up at the commentary <laughs> table at All Star? You That's know how it. he just kind of forced his way in there and you guys were like, all right, I guess you could do some commentary. Yeah. That's basically the podcast and he just kind of. Determination. You know, I like it. He just kind of yeah. forced his way in there and, and then he never left. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, the two. Did like, he show like, like midway through a show? You know, that you throw baloney. Uh huh. So he threw me like a little granola bar Ooh. and a thing of water, and I came back the next week. <laughs> yeah. And it was there again. And it was there again. He's just and like walking into the that's gym, it, and that's the last pieces on the seat. And, and then like, finally, like them? after the third one, he's like, "I'm done feeding him. He's mine now. You know." <laughs> Dog's gonna keep coming back. So he didn't say, "Hey, hey, I'm around. I see you." Uh, No, no, he did not. Alfonso Gomez, me. (laughs) Which that was a pleasant surprise, by the way. That was a pleasant surprise. (laughs) Um, No, what what happened was uh, originally the owner of the gym that we broadcast from, Sweet Science uh, Boxing Gym, Mm -hmm. uh, Marco Trejo, who's a good friend of mine, was the Mm -hmm. co-host, and we he had just by circumstance run into Stacks at an amateur event, like one day and this was very early on i think we were like only 15 episodes in or 10 or 15 episodes in and uh he invited stacks to be a guest the next day and mm-hmm. so stacks came was on the show and then uh you know came back a few times brought a few guests of his own and that was that was it and then eventually uh you know that was it yeah <laughs> it was just that all after that that yeah. episode was like what are you doing next week <laughs> yeah exactly so what time next week it's like, it's like how you ended up on the show you know what i mean geo's basically a, a you know stacks jr <laughs> i definitely wouldn't call him stacky no nah. stacky little stacks but, you, know, you guys you guys are on the show and now you know you just i you know I, I i think of it as i think of it fondly because at least i must be doing something right if you guys keep willing to come back you know yeah. what i mean <laughs> with a one hour notice yeah <laughs> right if you guys will come if you'll yeah, drop yeah, if a... you'll drop everything you do and come at one hour's notice to help me fill out an hour or so be calling me up i feel like hey, i do i hit well, i feel bad what are you man. wearing <laughs> <laughs> i hit Gio, Gio's like coming straight from soccer and stuff like that he's like i was just playing basketball no, and I'm I, in he's at home with his with his puppies <laughs> bye guys soccer hey, with so, dogs. so check this out man we we're talking about fury right in vegas yeah. uh-huh so I'm on my way to Vegas. Uh-oh. So. Let's go. Let and me I, zoom in on I this see, camera. I see a San Bernardino County Sheriff, right, on the 15th, and I see a CHP. I never see that, right? <laughs> you usually see one or the other. It's usually the sheriff or the cool. CHP, not both, right? And I'm like, I tell Santa, oh, got him, right? So I slow <laughs> down, and I'm looking, right? I'm like, damn, I wonder what this idiot did. <laughs> so I keep going, right? So we get to Vegas. We do the whole thing check into the motel and as we get to the motel i go around to the back to, to park and i'm like at the hotel and i'm like damn look that's that fucking car that <laughs> no <cops> way had, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? so we i didn't think anything of it but i'm like that's that same fucking car man it's that it's following dodge me. <laughs> right so we get up there we get to the room and chris rodriguez comes in and he's like yeah uh we got pulled over <laughs> i'm like what I'm like, don't tell me you guys were in a black car. Yeah, yeah, we were in a black car. And this dude's like all paranoid telling me like, yeah. And, um, and, and the guy didn't have his license. And then the girl had to drive. And like he was like paranoid telling me this story. I'm so like, funny. dude, don't tell me you guys were in a black car. And it was a sheriff and it was a CHP, wow. right? He's like, it was. It was us. <laughs> and I'm like, damn, dude. I'm like, I seen you guys. He's all, you seen us? I'm like, yeah, I seen us. He's all, I was just in the back and I was nervous and I didn't know what to do. If you ask me why I don't roll with them, oh, that's man. why. Yeah, but that <laughs> yeah. shit was it was comedy, man. I'm like, it was it was, was like a you had to be there story, you know, just yeah. the, the look on, on like the Chris other Chris's is, face, you know, bro. Chris, you know, Chris, Chris is just like, I can't believe you've seen us. <laughs> That anxiety kick in. <laughs> oh, man, yeah. That, all, was that was my first time ever crossing state lines, and I didn't think <laughs> I was going to make it across the border. <laughs> Dude, because yeah, he was, he, like, before oh, the trip, he's like, I've never, my. like, left SoCal. I've never been out of state. I was like, you never been to Mexico? Like, my girl's like, you never been to Mexico? He's like, he's like no, never been out of state. <laughs> no, I was like, I would joke with that. I was like, Dude, you're not gonna, we're not going to make it. Like, you're not going to get out of state. Something's going to happen. I was just like, do I jinxed it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why he got all scared, I guess, when he got stopped. So, yeah, we just got stopped because... Yeah. Things happen. Things happen. Speeding. Speeding. Yeah. Speeding. It's real easy to speed on the highway. And they're man. done that. Yeah. So, yeah, but it was. Uh, what a coincidence. Yeah, we all ended up at the uh, same hotel and then at the same. Oh, ta- that's cute. Tell us the more. Same yeah. taco, <laughs> the same taco. He been asleep when he said that. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, man. No, we just watched some boxing when they ate some tacos. That was fun. Chill night. A couple of drinks here and there. That's cool. Oh, just oh. a few. Just a couple of drinks. That's just all. A couple. That's, cool. that's what happens. Yeah, that was a fun, fun, fun weekend for sure. Oh yeah. Yeah. So you guys are going back to Vegas this weekend? Yeah. Who are you guys gonna go interview over there, man? Ourselves. <laughs> yeah. Huh? 
Just uh, do a podcast yourself there. Yeah, we'll, yeah, yeah. We're gonna call the the, the magician yeah, we'll Anthony Sims Jr. Try to he has get a Anthony fight. Sims. Is he out there in Vegas right now? Or? No, he's in Miami, so he has a fight on the thirtieth. But uh, yeah, we're just gonna do a little uh, little interview and then upload it. Uh, yeah, later. Hopefully, we're you guys gonna bring all to this fancy it. gear with you? Nah, we, <laughs> <laughs> we wish we can't say it on air. <laughs> We evidence. might get pulled over I by, <laughs> by the what are you doing highway patrol. <laughs> What's all this equipment back here? Yeah. <laughs> Why is there a hack Supreme Boxing in the back? <laughs> <laughs> hey, so um, real quick, February mm. 8th, it's a Saturday. We're going to be doing a media workout for Blair Cobbs at the, okay. at the Hall of Fame. So oh, okay. I'm gonna oh putting, okay, cool, cool. Yeah, I'm going to be putting a press release out because inside of the Hall of Fame, we have a ring and everything. So yeah. we're going to do his media, his media workout there at the Hall of Fame. And then Thursday the 13th, we're going to be announcing the uh, 2020 induction class for the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame. Oh, okay. So you guys are more than invited. I'll get you guys nice. all the info and everything. For sure, for sure. Did I make it? Am I in? Of course, brother. No, I mean into the Hall of Fame. Did I make it? Not this year. Not this year? Not this year. <laughs> all right. You got to be retired. I thought years. you had more pull than that, but I'll wait, <laughs> I'll wait for next year. I can put you in. Put you on the list. So what's next? Crawford, Just boxing. Crawford fan of the year. <laughs> I like him, bro, but like you didn't have to argue with you that much, man. And then I think that always happens. And right? then you're my homie, so I gotta get your back. Man. Hey, so. Stacks, did the awards already go out? Did you guys already? Did, I I saw the nominations, but so I didn't see. So we have winners. They just haven't been announced yet. Okay. I'm not for sure when Nancy's gonna do it. We're kind of comp- contemplating on how it's gonna happen, but she's gonna actually be leaving to China next week. Okay. So she'll be. Uh, I believe she's gonna be actually supervising for the WBC out there in China a okay, couple of the cool. fights. So yeah, shout out to Nancy for getting uh, and to East X for getting us that uh that allowing us to go to the meet and greet with Tyson Fury for sure. So shout out to Nancy. Yeah, Your panties good with. <laughs> he was he was yeah. all happy, man. He, oh, I, I know. I, I pull I, up in the parking lot. That's line. why I don't go with them. Dude. This dude's like I didn't even recognize him. Right, he's just outside of his car, like waving at me before I had even parked. I'm like, who's that? Like that car. Cynthia's you will like, never see me in the same car as them. Cynthia's <laughs> like one of your fans is out there waving no. stacks. <laughs> One of your fans. That shit was funny. You nah, got no fans. <laughs> I got a few on Facebook. This guy stacks. <laughs> hey, Chris, wave at him. <laughs> I, got the, I got the little kids. Like You got the, out of the car and they were like, the where's the white Carlos, beats guy? <laughs> Carlos and uh, what's the other one? Uh, Evan, yeah. Oh, Evan, B-Boy. B-Boy Evan. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, see, I got a couple fans going to be like, can I get a picture stack? So like, we, have, we have a running Calm book. down, dude. He asked me the same thing. <laughs> He's a nice guy. His dad likes taking pictures. That's what I'm saying. Is that going to be some, some, somebody someday? <laughs> Maybe. Know. You know, when he asked me, can, like his dad was like, can he take a picture with you? I was like, tripping. I was like, what the fuck? I had been drinking too. I didn't want to open my mouth. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> no, so we yeah, had like a running joke with Chris Rodriguez, like, like he sees them like he, Chris goes to most of the events and like if he doesn't see them he worries like hey they're not here he must be sick or he something must, like there's some B boy must be sick cause he's <laughs> not here <laughs> Chris is is a good dude man yeah got a good heart just looking out yeah. for the guy yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> man I wish I would have seen his reaction when you when he when I was telling him car, yeah because yeah. we had some adventures right with the uh, the the gas station. Oh yeah, yeah. Did you guys do rob a gas station? <laughs> this guy pulls up at a gas station like at midnight, South Central. Ghetto is gas station, dude. So they don't have like numbers. They literally have like notebook papers taped onto the thing. And he pulls up, and we're like, "Don't do it. I need gas. I I'm need out. gas. Don't." Out. We're like, "Don't do it, dude. We'll push the car. If we have to." <laughs> Did you guys do it? No. So we stopped. Halfway. We stopped, and then. Uh, we saw like 10 zombies walking toward us. Yeah, it was bad. <laughs> and, and, Chris and then was we took freaking off. out. He was, fr- I kind of, <laughs> I was like, bro, chill, like, relax. South Central. Yeah. But we, we left. Cause That's I was like, like uh, Chris there, was too nervous. Out there in Victorville, right? Uh-huh. The Mojave River cuts between Victorville and Apple Valley, right? Uh-huh. And Old Town Victorville, I call them the walkers, like from The Walking Dead. Because, like, all the bums live on the river bottom. Okay. Yeah. And so, like, at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning, they're just, like, roaming the roads like zombies. Because the only thing that's open is an a.m. and p.m. Uh-huh. Wow. But one time I had to stop. And Cynthia's like, fuck that. The walkers just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> hurry, snacks. Hurry. <laughs> yeah, she's like, I'll just get gas just in the morning. Just throw the snacks. And then we had another one after All-Star Boxing at the Quiet oh, Camp, yeah, too. We pulled bad. up to Carl's. 
and we're in the drive-thru and there's like a car to our left and a wall to our right and we're mm. in the drive-thru and some random walker just pops up too walks to the drive-thru like nothing next to the car and we're just like fuck <laughs> he was ready to step on it yeah, yeah. I, was a this I was a walker in texas bro <laughs> when i when i got there right i went out texas there for, ranger i went out there for the mikey <laughs> fight now for the mikey and the earl fight uh-huh. and i was hungry as hell man uh-huh. so i went to fucking waterburger like at two o'clock in the morning because uh-huh. it's 24 hours right mm-hmm. but the only thing is open is the drive through the <laughs> thing's not and I didn't take a car. I yeah. flew in. Right? So I fucking walked to the drive through <laughs> to get a water burger and some fries. No wonder you think it's better than in and out getting yeah, it at yeah. two in the morning when you're all hungry I'm walking like, through the drive through. The lady's like, it's closed. I'm like, I just want some food. <laughs> like, can I walk through the drive through? She's like, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I walk through the fucking drive through. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. I've walked to like four or five in the morning. It's uh, not fun. Well, the morning, the morning ain't that bad. When it's like 2.33, like that's... 2.30, that's, yeah. Like 4 a.m. in Vegas? It got blessing that they served you, though, because some people would be like, nope, you need a car. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Well, I would have just called an Uber and had them drive through the... <laughs> I'll and get my and then take me right across the street. Yeah. <laughs> Getting Uber Eats. All right, man. Yeah. We're two hours in, man. That's Breaking cool. records here. Oh. <laughs> well, you oh, guys yeah. got anything to promote? <laughs> um, promote, man. Just boxing. Make sure yeah. to follow us. We'll have a show this weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, then after that, we're going to take a, a little break for a few weeks, and then we should be back. But uh, make sure to follow us, the Jess Boxing Podcast, Jess Boxing YouTube channel, Facebook, Instagram, all the good things. Follow us on Supreme Boxing. Um, I'll be doing some work this weekend. I'm going to be going to a media conference for Fury and Wilder. At the Fox Studios this Saturday, so I'll be out there. So, uh, doing some stuff there. And then we got the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame stuff coming up. Mm -hmm. So, we got the uh, media workout, public workout for Blair the Flare Cops, February 8th. Then we're going to have the, uh, we're going to be naming the inductees for the 2020 class on February 13th. That's a Thursday Mm -hmm. out there in Vegas. Um, If you want to be part of that, you want to be part of the press release, uh, make sure to DM me or shoot me an email. I'm sure you guys can get a hold of me mm. one way or the other. Sure. Um, also, you could DM the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame. I run the social media through there. Cool. So if you have any questions on anything, DM me. And uh, that's about it, man. What you got, Sean? Took yeah. everything. <laughs> I know he took it all. <laughs> I got nothing else. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Make sure to follow us uh, at Just Boxing Live on Facebook. You can catch our show live every <clears throat> Sunday on Facebook, normally at 2 p.m. We try and be consistent. And, uh, of course, Just Boxing Live on Instagram and follow Just Boxing on YouTube. And maybe I'll get a Twitter. Everyone keeps Ooh. telling me to get a Twitter. Man, that's where it's at. Twitter's where it's at. Well, what's next? TikTok? So I get TikTok? I don't even know what that nah. is. We can talk about that afterwards. <laughs> T- ask Alfonso. <laughs> yeah, but you guys have a podcast tomorrow, right? By the time this is out, people oh, can yeah. already watch it. Where can they watch it or listen yeah, to it? Yeah, tomorrow uh, we'll be on the Standing 8 podcast. Yeah. So make sure to follow us there or not follow us there, but... We'll be on the Standing Eight podcast. You can follow them. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a call-in podcast. We've got guys in Texas, L.A., New Jersey. So it's a basically a call-in podcast that will be on tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Pacific time. Catch us on Facebook and then also on the Standing Eight website, which is on their Facebook because I'm not for sure exactly what their website is. If it's the Standing Eight or if it's the Pound for Pound, I know. Yeah, so P- Pound for Pound Boxing Group is the group that they administer. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's part of the Standing A podcast. So the oh, Standing okay. A podcast is their Facebook, uh, and you could catch it live on Facebook or on their website. But I check them out on Facebook. So yeah, dope, dope. And make cool. sure to check out um, that show. And well, it was was it the first of the year? And we had Cynthia Conte. We had yeah, Aaron Cornejo. from the Standing A. It was A the first podcast. show of the year. Maricela Cornejo. We had a great show Nancy right Rodriguez, Nancy Rodriguez from the WBC. Uh, yeah, we had man. That was a great show, man. We lost our power. We yeah. broke Thank you. Records. We did some <laughs> numbers, huh? <laughs> I think as soon as we were done, we had like six thousand views yeah. just on yeah. Facebook. So yeah, yeah, that was popping. Yeah, that, that was popping. Is a was. way to put it. I was you know, very, very impressed. I'm Gio, glad everything Gio went brought well. in a lot of fans. <laughs> <laughs> Two or three. <laughs> yeah. Gio brought them all, man. Gio I'm glad it worked out though, because you were trying out <laughs> the new switcher. I was right. freaking you were out, man. Out, I was freaking and it out. It came out perfectly. So. Yeah, I heard that yeah, you were pushing the bag. Good. Yeah, I tried it like the week before, and um, that shit had like a horrible lag to it, right? Yeah. Oh, man. And it's like, what are you looking at? What are you looking at? I'm like, it's lagging bad. Uh, oh, no, no. Shit. He's trying to fix it, Dude. right? So after the show, he's like, 
I was freaking out. I'm just going to erase it. I'm like, okay. I no, yeah. I was I was I was absolutely uh Gio can attest to this, man. I was terrified during that entire <laughs> show. I was even as it was going and it was working, I was worried it was going to break part of the way through. I wasn't going to understand it. The setup yeah. took hours and hours and hours to do. Oh, and he was getting used I'd to the right switches. It. This yeah. camera's this one. This camera's yeah. that one. Okay. And live switching. Yeah, like there's a few times where I realized I forgot way. to put the camera on the right people and stuff okay. like that. So I was freaking out. But at the end, I looked. I went back and I looked at some of it. It plays, man. The camera switching is hey, cool. I dig there it. There you go. Nice. Uh, so I know the feel, bro. Take instant classic. Yeah. Instant yeah. classic. It was an instant classic for sure. So all right, you what? guys could check out all our our production live switching and see me nervous on Sunday. We got something new for you guys. Uh oh. So hopefully, all uh, right. Hopefully everything works out. We're gonna try to stream on two different platforms live at the same time. Oh, for sure, we'll check Ooh, it out. We're taking we'll see. risks. We'll see how it goes. Ambitious. It is yeah. what it is, man. We got this. And new cameras. Hey. Hey. And also, thank you to all the fans, man. Uh, the last couple of weeks, they just put us over the 30,000 mark on our hey. subscribers for the YouTube channel. Nice. We're at 30,400 now. Nice. So. I'll, I'll do something special at 50. What should I do at 50? Fight hmm. me. I'll take just a just a straight punch from you. Fight me. Not from you. I ain't gonna <laughs> fight you at 50. <laughs> fight I see you working out with Alfonso Gomez. It's, uh, yeah, I don't big know, man. Shout out to him. I'm not ready that for it. That was fun. That I'm was good. I'm not ready for that heat. My body still hurts. <laughs> <laughs> that was Sunday. My body still hurts. <laughs> no, no, no. We'll, we'll, we'll some, figure something out. I'll do something out, special at 50. If I can hit 50K subscribers, hmm. I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but I'll, I'll figure it out. Throw, Throw a barbecue me. at the gym, man. Yeah. That'd be cool. A barbecue? A cake with <laughs> free hot dogs and hamburgers. Yeah, man, a cake the with the fifth five zero on it. I'll sign st- stacks autographs. Just bring your own glove. <laughs> I'll sit there and sign autographs. Bring your own gloves. You BYOG. BYOG. I'll sign <laughs> autographs. Bras and panties. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right, right man. Let's get out of here. Uh, what else we got? That was it, right? Oh, I'll start boxing. Uh, I'll start boxing. Uh, Valentine's Day. That's a Friday, actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, February 4th. 14th, I'm 14th. sorry. Yeah. 14th, we'll be there all day, all night, you know. So, yeah, stay tuned. That's on Facebook Live at All Star Boxing. So, hopefully, you guys can make it out. One more free. thing, man. Mm-hmm. Um, March 14th, <coughs> I got a fighter fighting out here at Hawaiian Gardens, man. Adano hey. Choa. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, from yeah, yeah. Uh, Compton, California. Yeah, we've had him on the show. 11 and 1. Yeah. So, he's going to be fighting the main event against a kid from uh, Houston, Eric Manriquez. Is going to be coming up, in yeah. from. I'll tat it down, a little cholo. Yeah. Gonna be coming out to, <laughs> to LA, so you yeah. know, uh, should be a good fight for Adan. Yeah. Hawaiian Gardens Casino. Hawaiian Gardens Casino. Yeah. If you guys are interested in tickets, DM me, DM sure. Adan. Also, uh, sponsorship packages are still available. Every little penny helps, man, because it pays for their training, it pays for their nutrition, it pays mm-hmm. for medicals. There's a lot of stuff that goes in to these fights more than just people think, you know. Yeah, so yeah. it's uh does tend to be costly for some of these fighters, these yeah. younger fighters that are coming out of pocket for their training and everything else, man. Yeah. So gym yeah. fees or yeah. whatnot. So And his his only loss is to Adam Lopez. Lopez. Yeah. Lopez. In his yeah. third fight. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. So yeah. we're uh, hoping to do big things with Adam this year, man. Yeah, shout out to Adam. Right. Straight out of Compton. All right, make sure to follow us at Against DA Ropes on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and all that good stuff. Uh, YouTube, Against the Ropes Podcast. And that's it for me. That's it. Guess what we'll start online. Uh, website. Uh, and this past weekend, uh, shout out to uh, the greatest. Uh, celebrate her birthday. You know, so, yeah. Who? The greatest. Muhammad Martin Ali. Martin Luther King. <laughs> Boy, Mayweather. <laughs> <laughs> Terrence Crawford. <laughs> 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 hey, thank you guys for coming, though. Right. Thank you guys. We appreciate it. Stax, we finally got you on. That's thank right. you, Sean. You're welcome. Anytime. Just don't knock on the door and be the creepy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to knock on the door. I'll look in the window. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. We'll be back next we'll be week. Back. Peace. 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 Like, uh, you already know I said I'm a fun guy. <laughs> Shout out to Against the Ropes. You know what mine mine is? Let's box bitches. It's almost fight night. Shout out to Against the Ropes. Thank you for the support. Keep doing your thing. You're doing a great job. So thank you and best wishes.
huge, huge, huge shout out to Against the Ropes. Against the Ropes. Shout out to Against the Ropes. Thank you guys for uh, the interview and uh, hope to see you here very soon. Against the Ropes, always doing the right thing. Uh, shout out to Against the Ropes, man. I appreciate you guys for having me taking the time on Charlie. Against the Ropes, number one. Freddie Roach. Thank you very much.